Well, let's let's dive into that then, and and that's kind of what I'd like to transition to next is uh, what what exactly should organizations be doing training? If I'm if I'm a security leader, I'm responsible for uh, making sure that people are complying with you know, maybe cyber issues or, or physical security risks. Um, mm. How would how would you advise me to revamp my safety program to to make it more effective? Yeah, great question. I think it's really this three component idea of before, during and after the training. There's things we can do at each one of those time points. So before the training, uh, it's being mindful and, and perhaps having some data on what are those existing characteristics that trainees are going to turn up to uh, turn up with to the training session. So you may uh, already be doing a, a safety culture or climate survey. You may already be doing some sort of data collection on your people. Um, as part of maybe a bigger engagement uh, survey approach. And you can use that information to say, well, maybe there's some pre-training that we could get people to do so that they're more ready, they're more prepared when they get to that classroom experience. Um, you know, whether it be some of the content, so we just focus on the practical skills and the more of interactive, engaging components in the classroom. Um, or you may have different sorts of streams of, of people coming to, uh, if they have maybe very entrenched, perhaps less positive, safety beliefs and attitudes, they may have some additional modules they have to complete to, to make them ready for that training experience. So it's a whole host of things before. Um, the, the, the sort of the, 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 the during um, I divide into two, there's the delivery and there's the design. So you mentioned something before about the trainer, like trainer credibility is a really big thing in health and safety. We know that from the research. So if you have the wrong person delivering the training, that can really erode your efforts to, to create that change. Um, and by the wrong person, perhaps, you, you know, you mentioned a couple of things there where they're maybe not using adult learning principles. They're not, uh, you know, recognizing the fact that people arrive at the training room with their own experiences and they want to share that with other adults in the room. Um, and then also, I guess, just who, who, whether that person has the right status and, and credibility and influence in the workforce. Um, I mentioned design as well, which is part of the during. So design is about, well, let's uh, maybe involve and collaborate with workers so that they have a good sense of what's going to be coming up in the training and have some buy-in and engagement already from the start. And let's fast forward to the end, though, to that, that after the training, what do you do? Well, the biggest factor that shows the most return is supervisors taking an active interest in what people have learned during that classroom experience. So checking in, having conversations, holding people accountable, um, working with them on how they're going to use what they've just learned and giving them the time and space to actually practice. So in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of a little tour of what I'd change or what I'd, you know, what I'd optimize about a training session in the safety world. If you, if you could show up in the organization and wave the, the magic wand to, to fix everything overnight, that's the, the three-step blueprint. Yeah, I mean, th maybe the only thing I've missed there is probably um, a good evaluation strategy because we know that just by measuring the outcomes of the training by and going beyond just the smile sheets and the reactions, but actually asking people, you know, three or six months later, what did you use? What barriers did you have? Um, that that measurement also stimulates the transfer, uh, which, which has uh, got, got some good research behind as well. 